Have you ever wondered what your family would do in case of an emergency? It's a question that might sound alarming, but it's one we should all be asking ourselves. Why, you may ask? Well, the truth is, emergencies are unpredictable. They can happen anytime, anywhere, and to anyone. Without an emergency plan in place, we leave ourselves and our loved ones vulnerable to potential risks and dangers. These could range from natural disasters like hurricanes or earthquakes, to man-made crises like fires or power outages. Let's take a moment to imagine a different scenario. A scenario where, thanks to a well-thought-out emergency plan, your family knows exactly what to do when disaster strikes. There's no panic, no confusion, just a calm and organized response. That peace of mind, that confidence in being prepared for any situation, it's priceless. It's the cornerstone of any emergency plan. Doesn't it feel reassuring to know that you can prepare your family for any emergency situation? The first step to creating an emergency plan involves identifying the types of emergencies your family could potentially face. Now, emergencies can be as varied as the weather, quite literally. Natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes, or wildfires are common in certain regions. If you live in an area prone to any of these, you'll want to take them into account when planning. But remember, they can occur anywhere so don't rule them out completely. But natural disasters are not the only emergencies to consider. House fires, for instance, can happen to anyone, anywhere. They can be caused by anything from a forgotten candle to an electrical fault. Knowing how to react quickly and safely can be the difference between a close call and a tragedy. Likewise, medical emergencies are also something to consider. These can range from sudden illnesses to injuries. For families with members who have chronic conditions, such as diabetes or heart disease, having a plan in place to handle potential medical emergencies is crucial. Beyond these, there are other less common but equally important emergencies to think about. These might include chemical spills, terrorist attacks, or even pandemics. While these may seem unlikely, recent events have shown us that they can and do happen. Your geographical location plays a significant role in determining the emergencies you are most likely to face. For instance, if you live in a coastal area, hurricanes and floods might be your primary concern. On the other hand, if you live in a city, you might be more concerned about fires or terror attacks. Your family's health conditions are another crucial factor. Families with members who have specific health conditions should take extra precautions. For instance, a family with a member who has asthma should have a plan in place in case of an asthma attack. Other personal factors also come into play. For instance, if you have pets, you'll want to consider how to keep them safe during an emergency. Or if you have elderly family members, you'll need to consider their specific needs. Remember, a well-thought-out emergency plan begins with understanding the types of emergencies your family could face. Once you've identified potential emergencies, you need to design a communication plan. This is an essential building block in your overall emergency strategy. Why is it so crucial, you may ask? Well, in the chaos of an emergency, maintaining clear and consistent communication can be the difference between confusion and clarity, panic and calm. Now let's delve into how we can design a communication plan that works for your family. Broadly speaking, your plan should detail how you will stay in touch with each other and where you will get information during an emergency. The first thing to consider is the different methods of communication at your disposal. Cell phones are a great tool but they can be unreliable during emergencies. Networks can become overloaded or power may be out, rendering your cell phone useless. So it's always wise to have a backup. Landlines can be more reliable in these situations but they too can fail. That's where emergency radios come in. An emergency radio is a standalone device that can receive broadcasts without relying on the power grid or cell networks. It can be a lifesaver when other communication methods fail. Once you've thought about the tools, you need to think about the people. Specifically, you should identify a central contact person outside the emergency area. This person should be someone who is not likely to be affected by the same emergency. All family members can contact this person to report their status, and they can relay messages between family members if direct communication isn't possible. Remember, your communication plan should be tailored to your family's needs. For example, if you have family members who are hearing or visually impaired, you might need to consider additional communication methods such as text messages or flashing lights. Designing a communication plan may seem daunting but it's a critical step in ensuring your family's safety during an emergency. And remember, it's not just about having a plan, but also about regularly reviewing and practicing it. A robust communication plan ensures that your family stays connected during an emergency. 
The next step is to create an evacuation plan. An evacuation plan is like a roadmap to safety during an emergency. It's a predetermined path that every member of your family understands and can follow even under stress. It's not enough to know that you need to leave your home in a crisis. You need to know exactly where you're going and how you're going to get there. Now let's talk about the importance of having a predetermined evacuation route and meeting point. The evacuation route is the path you'll take to get to safety. This could be a route to a nearby relative's house, a community center, or any other safe and familiar location. The meeting point on the other hand is a specific spot where everyone agrees to gather. This could be a landmark, a neighbor's house or a local school. It's crucial that everyone in the family knows these locations by heart. Just as a GPS offers alternate routes when roads are closed, your evacuation plan must also have a backup. Let's say your primary route is blocked due to fallen trees or flooded roads. What then? This is where your backup plan comes into play. It's essentially your plan B, a different route to your safe location. But here's the thing, a plan is only as good as its execution, and execution improves with practice. Practicing your evacuation plan regularly ensures that everyone knows exactly what to do, where to go, and how to get there. It helps to familiarize everyone with the plan and can highlight any potential issues that need to be addressed. Practice during different times of the day and under different weather conditions to cover all possible scenarios. Remember the clock ticks faster during an emergency. You won't have the luxury of time to think and decide. That's why it's important to plan ahead, prepare and practice. It's about equipping your family with the best chance of getting to safety quickly and efficiently. Your family's safety during an emergency significantly increases with a well-practiced evacuation plan. Finally, assembling an emergency kit is crucial in your emergency plan. This is your go-to box, your lifeline, when an emergency strikes. It's packed with everything you might need to keep you safe and comfortable until help arrives or until you can move to a safer location. Let's start with the basics. Water and non-perishable food are essential. Consider packing enough food and water to last each family member for at least three days. Choose food items that don't require cooking or refrigeration. And remember, don't forget a manual can opener. Next, you'll want to include first aid supplies. A good kit should contain items like adhesive bandages, antiseptic wipes, tweezers, medical tape, and a digital thermometer. You might also want to include a few over-the-counter medications like pain relievers and antihistamines. Now, let's think about the essential documents you might need. Copies of identification, insurance policies, and medical records should all be included. You might also want to consider including a list of important phone numbers in case your phone battery dies and you can't access your contacts. Tools are another important aspect of your emergency kit. A multi-purpose tool with a knife, can opener, and screwdriver can be invaluable. Other useful items might include a flashlight with extra batteries, a battery-powered or hand crank radio, and a whistle to signal for help. And last but certainly not least, consider the unique needs of your family. Do you have a baby? If so, diapers, baby food and formula might be needed. What about pets? Don't forget food and extra water for them too. If anyone in your family takes prescription medication, try to keep an extra supply in your kit. Remember, your emergency kit is not a one-and-done deal. It needs to be updated regularly to ensure everything is in good condition and that the food and water are still safe to consume. A well-stocked emergency kit can be a lifesaver during an emergency. It's your family's first line of defense when disaster strikes, so take the time to assemble it carefully and thoughtfully. Creating an emergency plan may seem daunting, but the peace of mind it brings is immeasurable. Let's recap the keys to crafting a robust plan for your family. Begin by identifying potential emergencies in your area, such as natural disasters or power outages. From there, design a communication plan, this includes determining how you'll stay in touch and where you'll meet if separated. Next, craft an evacuation plan. Knowing the quickest and safest routes out of your home could make all the difference. Lastly, assemble an emergency kit. It should contain essentials like food, water, and medications, as well as important documents. But remember, an emergency plan isn't something you create and then forget about. It needs to be reviewed and practiced regularly. So, make it a part of your family routine. Remember, the best time to prepare for an emergency is before it happens. Start creating your family's emergency plan today.